I believe that uh, what you came into this room with today, uh, as you offered it and gave it to God, God is moving in your life today. And so this morning, I want to talk about uh, authority. Uh, the t title of my message in the middle of this Acts series is Under Whose Authority? Under Whose Authority? I want to talk about praying and living in God's authority. I think living in this, this cultural climate that we live in, uh, we don't pray with authority at times. We, ac we actually live sometimes with this victim mentality by which we, we don't pray and we don't receive that authority because of our past experience of what we think God has, should have done in our lives. You remember that, the prayer request that you prayed for for so long? And God didn't show up and do it at the exact time that you wanted him to do it. So you kind of live in this victim mentality where, you know, I can't live in that authority. I tried that before. But we need to remember that we are sons and daughters of the King of Kings. Amen? Yes, amen. And so first, we have the ability to move through this life with his authority. Yes. We need to start this message this morning by saying that to you. You may have come into this room with something and you believe that nothing can be done with it. You can walk in that authority. Amen? Amen? And so that has been the number one common denominator in Acts 1 to 4 so far in our series. A group of uneducated people were told to wait for the promised spirit. They had witnessed Jesus' physical presence. I mean, that was authority enough, right? To be able to walk and talk and breathe and watch Jesus do miracles. I mean, that's some pretty amazing authority. But Jesus reminds them, under the authority of the Holy Spirit, you will do greater things. Everybody say greater things. Yes. And he leaves and they gather in this, this room. And, and and Jesus tells them to do something that was counterintuitive and countercultural. He said, wait. And they are filled with the Spirit, and they spill out into the streets where this festival was happening that wasn't by chance. There were thousands of people that came into the city, and, and, and they spilled out into the, into the street. And, and Peter, who spoke with his own authority in the past and messed it up, remember? But now he had a new authority. He speaks, and, and 3,000 people come, come to faith. Can you picture that? 3,000 people come to faith. And they show up to the temple and heal a lame beggar with the same authority. And so they're living in the, in the spirit. They're the brand new believers. They, they, they spill out into the street. God's given them this authority through the spirit, and they begin to activate it and do something about it. And they meet up with this person, this impossible situation, and, they, and, and God heals this person. And while the man held on to Peter, remember a couple of weeks ago, in Solomon's colonnade, which was a part of the temple, he then addresses the crowd inside there, and he preaches with authority the truth. And, and what do you know? They come to faith. People come to faith. They get, they, and then they get hauled in front of 11 different religious people, officials, and, and were scolded for being generous to a lame beggar. And so you see the tension there between the religious authority and the generosity of, of Peter and John as they walked in the authority of, of Jesus to do the impossible in their lives. And so we can't ignore that in that moment. And we still face it today as we walk in the Spirit and we obey God in, in what God has us to do and the tension there. So we get this sense of authority and it's a, remember, it's a reminder to us that the book of Acts that we have that same authority, by the way, so we can move through life with that. And it's also a reminder that for God, that God rules over everything. And he rules over your life, by the way and my life. And so under his life, we have that authority. He is the author of everything, by the way. And so we function underneath that with the Spirit of God, so we function under his authority. Amen. You need to be reminded of that today in this room. And so I can, I, not only do I walk through this life with authority, I can pray with authority. I can. And I'm not just praying prayers, hoping they get, they get past the ceiling. And I'm praying, I'm praying prayers that have the authority of God in them and on them. And, and, and it all begins with aligning with God. But here's what we must remember. Is that a prayer is a process where I move onto God's agenda, 
not the process of trying to convince God to move onto my agenda. I got a couple amens. That's good. That's good. Prayer is me submitting my will to the will of God. It is a process where I gladly join with the will of God. The word for prayer that Jesus used in Matthew 6 when he says, and when you pray, do not pray like the hypocrites. Because what was happening in that day was a lot of religious leaders and hypocrites looked like they had the part, right? They even carried prayer boxes on their head. And the more prayers they pray, the larger the prayer box. So on the outside, they looked the part. But Jesus was saying, don't be like the hypocrites who want it to be seen and have an an agenda. The Greek word Jesus uses here is prosikimia. And this is the word prayer he uses here. And it's this, to exchange wishes, pray to interact with the Lord by switching human wishes, our ideas, for his wishes as he imparts faith. It's this divine persuasion. You feel that when you're praying? That it's not your agenda all the time. It's God's agenda, and we fight that at times. But we often don't like to exchange wishes with God, by the way. Do we? I have a pretty good idea, God, of what I think you should be doing. And, you know, I think I would appreciate if you would do that for me. You need to know that those kinds of prayers don't work. They don't move the hand of God. Those kinds of prayers lead to frustration because God doesn't always do what I tell him to do. Amen? Amen? Right? He doesn't always do. It blows my mind because I, I'm, a pr- I'm a pretty sharp person. I have a pretty good understanding. I think I have a pretty good understanding who, where I need to go and what I should be doing in my life. But that's not God's agenda. That's my agenda. He doesn't do it when we tell him. I, I've told him exactly what to do by 2 p.m. Newfoundland time. Can you do it? But he doesn't always do that. And so we get frustrated and we lose heart at the end of the day and we throw up our faith, right, and our arms and, 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 and do our own thing and hope God comes along. That's where the enemy wants us to be, by the way. In between what God's will for our life in that moment and our will and the tension, and that's where the enemy lives, right there. Do your own thing. Be yourself, right? Right? Just, just live life to your own satisfaction. And that's where the enemy lives. And Peter and the church in Acts were so counter to this mentality. They exchanged their will for his will. And they got on board with his purposes. And that's why they stood up with bold faith. That's why they, they prayed with power and authority because they were aligned with what the Spirit was doing at the time. And before we land on the tail end of Acts 4, let me read you 1 John 5, 14 and break it down for you for a moment. And it says this, this is the confidence. Everybody say confidence. Confidence. My goodness, say it with confidence. confidence. Right, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. Is there anyone in the room today need more confidence in approaching God? Anyone lost your confidence because of your past experience in praying and God isn't answering? Have you lost your confidence? And he is saying, I want you to have the kind of authoritative confidence when you come to God. And it says, if we ask anything according to his will. There's the alignment. There's where we get carried away sometimes. And we get confused and we live in this victim mentality whereby where God didn't answer my prayer so I don't no longer live in that authority because it says according to his will. It's according to his will. And it says he, if we do that, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, according to his will, we know that we have what we have asked of him. See, this is a reminder that God wants to give you confidence to come boldly. That's what the Hebrew writer says. We can come boldly through the throne room of grace. How do, how do people like you and I who have messed up our lives do that? And that's what communion reminds me of. When I sit there and take communion, I don't take communion as a pastor. I take communion as a child of God, and I'm reminded the state that I came from. 
and where I was because you can't appreciate the gift unless you understand what the gift is for. Amen? And the gift was you were a sinner saved by grace. You were dirty. Right? It says we were filthy rags. And it, and it describes this, this position that you and I were in. We were lost and undone without God or his son. That's bad, by the way, if you're just tuning in. That's not good. But thanks be to God. Amen. When I pick up that bread and that, that juice, I go, woo, man. If I could dance, I would dance. Because I'm reminded, because of his broken body and his shed blood, I can stand in victory. Amen? Amen. I can stand in him. And that's my position. That is my position. No matter what I feel. No matter what you came in feeling like this morning, you are perfectly positioned in Christ, not because of what you can do or have done, but it was what has been done for you. That was for free, okay? And because Jesus has made a way through his perfect life that we, wherever we are, come on now, wherever you are in this moment, wherever you have been, whatever you have done, Whatever your definition of of God is, we can come through Jesus' grace into the very presence of Almighty God. Stop and think about that for a moment. We have the opportunity to come straight into the presence of God and not die. Wow. That's how powerful grace is. And, and, And God says, I want you to come timidly. I want you to come frightened. No. I want you to come boldly. I want you to come boldly. The greater the problem, the greater he is. I don't want you to come with your head down. I don't want you to sneak your way in. I don't want you to come in through the side door. You're a son and daughter of God. If you are in Christ Jesus, you know that he is Abba Father. And he's there waiting for you. When you come with your prayer, come with confidence, knowing that when you are in my will, we are going to shake some things up. And then he says, and if we ask anything according to his will, shouldn't that say when we ask? When we, because obviously when we know, we know that if we have an audience with God and we can pray for God to do something, we're going to exercise our ability to call on the Lord day and night. But that is not what it says here, nor is it what we do. It says, if we ask, knowing at times we won't ask. We, we'll worry. Anyone worrying this week? Now, you're in church. Oh, I just got some hands. I got some real people in the house today. I'm going to raise my two hands and my foot. <laughs> anyone fretting this week? Did you, anyone... Try to control the situation this week? Did you pray? Well, it's not that bad yet. (laughs) But when it gets really bad and I have no more options left, when I can't control, I can't change it and worry, and worrying doesn't work, well, you know, guys, we're running out of options here. We might might have to pray. And God is saying, why didn't you start with prayer? Before your brain tries to come up with logical answers, Prayer should be the option. And it says, when they heard this, Acts, 20, Acts 4, 24, okay? We're moved on to this chapter for a moment. And I'm going to tell you why I'm using this verse, and we're going to land there. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. See, from the problem to praying immediately. Remember the context of uh, chapter 4 of Acts? Peter heals a blind man. They run into the temple, and all the people were in awe. There were religious leaders. That they weren't happy. It's possible, you know, that sometimes in the middle of miracles, it makes some people unhappy. Hopefully it's not you or I. <laughs> they, they dragged them before the same religious leaders that put Jesus to death 50 days ago. They were warned not to speak about Jesus again. How do they respond? You are dragging us in here to scold us to sh- because we showed an act of kindness? Really? because it was outside of the, the, the constructs of what the law would tell them to do. But see, the, the disciples were, were running on a new operating system, if you want to use that. 
They weren't ro- ro- running on an old operating system of the law. Jesus had rose from the dead. They had seen him. They were with him. He left. The spirit of God was in them, and they were functioning in that spirit. And so, therefore, anybody that was fighting against them would not stop them because they had a a new message in their heart. Amen? Amen. The message of Jesus Christ who comes and saves those who are willing to be saved. And so, they release them. They tell them not to, 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 they scold them and tell them not to do anything. They, They go back to their own people and told them, and they prayed. You see, our motto should never be, I have not because I ask not. James said this, and he said it because we, when we ask, we ask with the wrong motives. He goes on to say that our motives are getting what we want instead of lining up with God's will at times. And, and God forbid that we be a church that misses miracles because we didn't ask of God and didn't call on heaven. God forbid that we be a church that misses miracles because we didn't align with God's will. You hear me? And for verse 14 of 1 John 5 says this, and if, if, and if we ask anything according to his will, so we can have confidence when we come to God, when we ask about God, he hears us. It doesn't mean he'll do what we ask all the time, it means our prayer is reaching the heart of God. And when it reaches the, his heart, things begin to happen. We will only see maybe a portion of, of what God is doing in our prayer requests. But God is always at work, and they reach him when we align our will with his will. Praying with authority starts with aligning with God's will, by the way. And when we pray with, the kind of, with, with that kind of authority, we can set heaven in motion. Can you imagine how much praying we would do if we could see what God was doing? That's what 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says. Pray without what? Without ceasing. And we would pray continually if we knew that God, we could see what God was doing, wouldn't we? We would pray continually if we knew that God hears in our prayers and our prayers are dispatched angels and move things. We would pray all day. We would become morning people. We'd be setting our alarms in the morning, wouldn't we, at 5 a.m. because I need to get up and pray because God is doing something. We would do that. In Christ, we have the potential to move things. And the enemy would be happy if we had more anxiety in our life and forget to pray with the con- that kind of authority. Prayer is aligning with God. Say that with me. Prayer is aligning with God. Say it again. Prayer is aligning with God. Not continually trying to get God on my page. It's me being available to him. And here's a simple pray, prayer to pray at times. God, how can I be used by you today? I want to be useful to you today. I, I want to be in step with you today. You will find that before you know it, that person who says very little to you at work is approaching you with issues in their life. If you're willing to be used by the Spirit... How can I be available? You will find, find that you will be more attuned to the needs around you. Often we will wake up in the morning and say, not necessarily with our words, but with our actions. God, I need you to be useful for me today. <laughs> and if you will, I'll, I'll worship you. Amen. We don't, we don't say it like that, of course. But that's our actions sometimes. That's mine at times. I wake up sometimes reminding God what he needs to do in my life. (laughs) The Acts Church wasn't posturing up on God like this. They had submitted their whole life to the will of the Spirit from that day in the upper room. They had aligned themselves to the will of God and moved in such authority that even the authorities hardly knew what to do with them. They were just like, what what is this move? We we, We thought we took care of this. Because their leader is gone, and we can't find a body, and they're talking about they're going to do greater things. What do we do with this? And so, it's the model prayer Jesus prayed in Matthew 6, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, we we build a theology around this, this statement, on earth as it is in heaven, where no one gets sick, right? 
No one has pain or sorrow. That's not Jesus, what Jesus was saying in Matthew 6. He was saying that we submit to the will of God for whatever he wants to do on the earth and knowing that, it, that it, he does this in a broken world. We're not going to avoid sorrow and pain. Anybody in the room today? Anybody in the room that don't have sorrow or pain? Raise your hand, please. If you do, write a book, please, so we can all read it. Right? We will never avoid it. It doesn't matter it doesn't mean we shouldn't pray for healing. Of course, we should pray for miracles. But only in heaven is there no death. Only in heaven are there no tears and are there no pain because the old order of things has passed away and the new order of things has come. That's the blessed hope we have for heaven. But that's not the reality right now, is it? So Jesus isn't saying we're going to turn this broken world into heaven. He is saying, what we are believing for is that on this broken planet, God's will can be done, and I am going to lean in with everything I have through the power of the Spirit. I'm going to lean into God's will on this earth. That's your purpose. The greatest authority we have is when we are at the center of God's will on this earth. And that's why the early church functioned with such authority. They knew the plan. What has God said about this will? That's what Peter and John are doing in Acts 4. Peter and John had been arrested. Some, someone gets healed and they get called into the question and the religious leaders tell them to tone it down. You know, like tone it down and Peter and John tell them, we can't tone it down. We can't stop talking about what we have seen and what we have heard. And they get threatened and they go back and tell their people. You see, now if I went back and told my people after... Um, I had done this amazing miracle and realized, well, I could tap into some of these greater things. And I got hauled into the same religious institution that Jesus got hauled into and was killed and crucified for. And they released me. I would go, thank you, God, for releasing me. And I would go back to my people and say, tone it down. <laughs> right? In my, human, in my human sense. In my human part of me. We need to tone. But you know, no, you need to tone it down here. But listen to what he does. They, they, on their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. Okay, that, we, you can't really interpret anything there, really. Okay, they could have said, you know, uh, we're in trouble. We need to disperse, go back and do your own thing. You know, there's nothing real evidential in there. But then he says, when they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer. There's that same word that I used earlier, where we, God is a divine persuasion. It is not our will, it's God's will. In prayer to God, sovereign Lord, they said, please help us. The bottom's gone right out of our. Nope. You made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. And here he goes, Psalms 2. Why do the nations, he's quoting David, why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and their rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Okay, that's terrible. Here's hap it's happening again. This re response seems to be out of place with the story. What you and I need to know is that they are praying God's word back to God. But as they are doing it, they are moving in authority. They are, they are brand new, spirit-filled believers, but they are already moving in authority, and they are showing us how to move in authority. Their first response wasn't, God, did you hear that? They are threatening us, so you need to help. No, their reaction wasn't a panic prayer. I do panic prayers. I have a master's degree in panic prayers. Oh, dear Lord, help me. Oh, it, uh, it's 10 versions of that. Oh, dear Lord, help me. Oh, dear God, help me. Oh, help me. What am I going to do, right? Don't look at me like that now. Yeah, I'm a pastor, and I can admit it. It's okay. It's freeing to admit it. I pay, pray panic prayers all the time. They didn't, they didn't pray like that. They said, I know this one. And they say, Psalms 2. The king of the earth will take their stand and rulers will band together against the Lord and his anointed one. You said it, God. These guys are not against us, but they're, they're against the anointed one. 
And you're right. When we start placing God's word in our prayers, it takes to a whole new level, doesn't it? Because you're not informing God based on your opinion. You are agreeing with God based on what God has already said. Amen? Man, I'm preaching way better than you're saying amen this morning. You are not telling God what needs to happen based on your limited understanding. You are agreeing with what God has already said. Man, that's walking in authority. That's what it means to align with God's authority. Here's what you said, God, in, in Psalms, what they are going to do. Indeed, and then he goes on and says, Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of this Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you have anointed. So in other words, what are you going to do about this, God? But watch now, they go from reminding God to reminding themselves of God's will. They did what you, your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. That's the prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. They're reminding themselves that they are on God's page. Amen? Amen. They are on God's page. Not trying to get God on their page. They know the plan. They know the will of God in this moment. You will be filled with power. They know the purpose of why they exist. They didn't say, oh, Lord, free us or, or, or Lord, take us out of this. No, they're saying, what has, God, what has God said? What does God want? And what has God already promised to do? It's important, a couple things to ask in the middle of your prayer life right now as you're waiting on God. What are you saying to me right now? We do a lot of talking, don't we? We do not do a lot of listening. What are you saying to me right now? What do you want right now? What have you already promised? Start with praying with that. And then verse 28 says, they. Who's they? Herod, Pilate, the Gentiles, and the people of Israel. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Thank you, Pilate. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Gentiles. You just did what God said you would do. When you are under God's authority, there is a confidence that goes beyond our normal prayer, doesn't it? They, they are confident now. We just saw it. It doesn't matter what it looks like from the earth's point of view. Because we base our faith and our prayer life from what we can see, right? That's a natural order. No, no, no. He's saying not from Earth's point of view. From Earth's point of view, there are the, these are the same leaders that killed Jesus, and we're in trouble. We're going to get out of here, right? We're going to get another job, go, go on EI or something, right? No, from Earth's point of view, what you are facing is insurmountable, by the way. What you're feeling this morning... In your prayer life, what you're praying for is insurmountable. I'm here to encourage you. It is. It's insurmountable. From earth's point of view, what you are asking is impossible. But from heaven's point of view, our God is in control. Even when from my point of view, it seems out of control. Amen? Amen. That's why they started the prayer with, O sovereign God. It's a statement of fact. It is a statement by which you place God in his proper place. You are sovereign. You are controller of the universe. You are in the middle of my life. You are in both the back and the middle and the front of my life. You are sovereign. So here comes the ask in the prayer. You are sovereign and in control. We have worshiped you. We have spoken your word back to you. So we're, go we're just going to go for it. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. <laughs> wow. I, 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 I'm trying to wrap my head around that. Because we do what we always do. We reflect on where we are in our faith when we read something like that and we go... Now, Lord, consider your threats, their threats, and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. In other words, not my will, but yours. We want to align with your plan, but we are going to need your power. That's what they're saying. We know what the plan is. The plan is Acts 1-8. The plan is, but you will receive power. Next slide, please. 
when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That's the plan. They know that. We know what the plan is. We know what your will is. We are aligning ourselves with your will. We're not praying for a removal from this uncertain circumstance. We are praying that you will enable us to align with your will. And that's living with authority. Do you see how they are placing themselves under the authority and the mandate of God to spread the gospel knowing that it might cost them everything? But they weigh it out. And their gain is way bigger than their losses because they know the plan. And when they moved in that position, God moved. And they ask him, they recognize him as sovereign. And I want you to see the pattern. They stood with boldness, not knowing the outcome. They, they spoke with power, not knowing the outcome. They acted with authority, not knowing the outcome. If, in case you, you missed it, the one common denominator in this boldness and power and authority was the unknown outcome. Because their security wasn't knowing the outcome. Their security was knowing whose will they came under. We spend a lot of time trying to figure out the outcomes in our life, and God is saying, what you need to do right now is just walk in my authority. You let me worry about the outcome. You let me consider your outcome because I'm an omnipot um, omnipresent God who knows I'm Jehovah Jireh who provides. I see your outcome. Right now, I'm asking you to walk in my authority. And so they come under his authority and they have the, the credentials to, to, to do it. Isn't it amazing? that when someone, you're looking for someone to do something for you and they show it up at your door and they don't have the credentials to do it? You ever been in that position? I had someone come and look at my computer one time because it was, I think, I, I wanted to throw it through the window to be honest with you, okay? And so I said, oh, let's, let's, let's call a company to come and have a look at it. So they come with their computer and they get on Google to Google the problem. And I'm like, I can do that. You understand? I can do that. As a matter of fact, I just did that for two hours. And so I'm standing over this person going, hmm, you know? And Rochelle's like, my blood pressure's going up. But when someone shows up with the right credentials, right? And you know they, they, they're speaking those credentials. They're like, you're like, that's okay, they got the language. But when they start putting their hands to the task and they fix it, you're like, yes. That's who I want to show up. And they come under the authority and then they have the credentials to, to, to say. You see, the church not only talked the talk, they were walking it. They had the authority and they had the credentials. They had the spirit of God in their, their lives and they were doing the miraculous. And it says, stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders. Here it is, here it is. The, under the authority of who? The name of your holy servant, Jesus. Under whose authority? Under the authority of Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and went home and didn't do anything else. No. And spoke the word of God boldly. That's the plan. With the authority that they were given. And so as the band returns... A bold prayer received a bold answer. Aligning with God gave them the authority in the name of Jesus. And they moved out from this place with God's authority on their life. In the face of death, by the way. Even in the face of persecution. Even in the face of hardship. Everywhere they went, they walked in authority with the power of Jesus. Why? Because... They had submitted themselves to the purpose and the plan and the will of God, and he said, I will fill you with power. It is, it is moving in step with God and calling on the deliverance of all people. That's the plan. And when we walk in this authority, God shows up in one of our small groups, by the way, a couple of weeks ago and heals a lady who had given, been given three months to live. 
and God healed her. They couldn't find the cancer. She was so excited, she ran down the hallway. That's the kind of authority. That after eight months, Red Spelfin sitting right with us today, God's healing his body. That's the authority we have to pray, amen? amen? We don't need permission to pray for the sick. We don't need permission to pray for the will of God over someone's life. We have the permission from God and access to the throne of grace. Amen. Who's authority? Amen. Where are you stepping in and aligning with God for the deliverance of someone? That's for you today. Where are you stepping in and aligning with God for the deliverance of someone? Write it down. Type it in your message to yourself. Email yourself like I do all the time. That's what happens when you get 49. <laughs> or f older. <laughs> Where are you stepping in and aligning with God for the deliverance of someone or something? When you, when, when you are not praying for you, we're not praying, we are, where you're not just praying for you, but praying for someone else because you know that Jesus has come to give the sight to the blind. That, that is why God had sent his son. Jesus reminds us, he anointed me to proclaim good news. To the poor, he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to, to, to set free the oppressed. So are you agreeing with Jesus where you have the authority to bring good news to the poor and set the oppressed free? Lift those who have been run over in this life. Is there someone in your life today that's just, life has run over them? And we declare like, you said, Lord, you would do the favorable year of the Lord, and we are not doing it with loud words because that's not what makes prayers bold, by the way. Even though I'm passionately shouting here this morning, I'm not angry, I'm passionate. This prayer in Acts 4 barely lasts two minutes, by the way. It's not long prayers. It's not quotations of, of four chapters of the Bible, and if you could do that, God bless you. <laughs> It is just, a, we're, we're, we're doing it because we are servants of God. We are aligning with God in the name of Jesus for the glory of God. We are, we're, we're going to stand in the gap and walk with authority we have by aligning with Yahweh in this moment. And I'm telling you, as you stand all over this room, we need a different mindset because we pull out of our driveways every Sunday and we rush to church to meet with Jesus. What a, what a different mindset that we, when we are coming down our street that we start praying for our neighbors. You ever do that? God, the Stevensons, and if there's a Stevenson in the room or you're watching, I'm not picking on you, I just pulled it out of my head. You know, that we, I pray for the Stevensons. They, they don't know you. They, they, they have never had this beautiful moment to come into the presence of God and worship you. They don't know the freedom that comes. So I pray over them today and call them by name. Have you done that? Just pray over their name. Stretch your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And Lord, I pray for the Nolans. Oh, no, not the Nolans. Every one of you got neighbors like that, right? I don't have Nolan neighbors. Lord, can you save the Nolans? Do what you said you would do. Give sight to the blind. Amen? I speak the name of Jesus over my office floor. When was the last time you, did, you spoke other names over your office floor, I'm sure? <laughs> Have you ever spoke the name of Jesus over your office floor? I'm not saying being a fanatic, walking from, from desk to desk. Calling, you know, I'm just saying speaking powerful prayers to yourself. Guess what? By the way, you were prayed for this morning. I prayed over every chair in this room. I do it almost every Sunday. I, I walk by places where I know you sit and I can add stories to those chairs. I, I, I walk over here and where Betty Burton normally sits who I haven't sat in, in a number of years who's struggling with cancer and I say, oh Lord, set the captive free, bring sight to the blind, bring healing to her body. I come over here on this side because I know there's family there that are struggling and I pray over their seat and say, Lord, I pray 
for that need in their lives. I pray for your power. I know they're drowning in the impossible, but you are the God of the impossible. So God, do something. I come over here in this part here, and I know families are struggling. I say, Lord, bring deliverance today to that person's life. Do it. Bring that son back to you, that daughter back to you. Bring healing back to you. Not in my own strength. Under the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And he can do it. He's done it. And he'll do it again. Speak the name of Jesus. I come in line, align with you, God. Submit it to you, you God. Surrender to you, God. And I'm going to pray an authoritative prayer. You see, their authority wasn't based on what they could see, but whose authority they stood on. And I believe every time we pray, God, I want your will to be done, we receive what we ask for. It may not look like what we think. Just like the, with Herod and the Gentiles and the people who killed his son, somehow, some way, God was still on his throne. And that's enough to keep coming with confidence. Everybody say confidence. confidence. Knowing that if I ask in his name, according to his will, he's going to move. Amen? amen? I cannot, amen. Even the children are saying amen this morning. Amen. amen. So let me say this, okay? Let me, let me talk about the elephant in the room this morning. I cannot resolve all your tensions today when it comes to prayer. I know that you have prayed prayers and God hasn't answered. And you may be still negotiating with God why that hasn't been answered. I can't, I, I can't, I can't fix that. I don't have answers to that. But I cannot resolve all that tension. But I can point to the cross and invite you, no matter your story, hallelujah, to rekindle your confidence today and continue to come to God and that he hears and he is moving. He is moving. He is moving. Who? Who or what is waiting for us to step forward in faith and pray a powerful prayer? Who? Who is waiting for you? Who or what is waiting for us to step forward in faith and pray a powerful prayer? Who? Just begin, to, just begin to pray now all over this room as we say goodbye to our live audience. Let's begin all over this room. Thank you, Jesus. The Spirit of God is in this place today. Thank you so much for joining us today. We just love the opportunity to connect with you online. And you know, if you're watching this morning and you have kids, and kids, if you're there, good morning. Do you know every week our Bethesda Kids online experience is right there for you to enjoy. You can find it all. We have our videos. We have our parent guides. We have devotionals. So if you miss a Sunday, you don't have to miss Kids Church. You guys can do it at home. So be sure to check that out. It's Bethesda.ca slash Bethesda Kids. And you guys can certainly join in the fun. So have a great day. And we can't wait to connect with you soon.